Hello and welcome back to Advanced Animation Application. I'm your boy, Charles, and today we're going to be looking at the Blend Poses by Bull and Blend Poses by Enum, or Enum, as we would say in Australia. So what do these functions do? Well, if we jump into our graph, we'll have a little look at them first. You know, Blend Poses by Bull. Now, as you can see, there is a true pose and a false pose. And into this active value, there will be a Boolean. There is a blend time for the true and the false. And then there is an output. Now, I have an anim graph already set up, but we're just going to put this at the very end of it. So it is like the last thing that is processed so that it is the, the top layer, I guess you could think of it as. We are going to put our regular stuff into the true pose. And into the false pose, let's just put in a reference pose, which is basically a T pose, right? Now, for our blend poses by bool, we need a boolean. So maybe we could get something like, you know, is the character moving? This is a, a boolean that I set just to make sure that, you know, the character is moving or if they're not moving. The way I do this is by checking every animation update, whether or not the character is moving past a certain speed. And then we have a little do once loop here and we set is moving or is not moving. Your bool might be something completely different. It might be something that's on your character as a variable. For example, you know, is injured, is healthy or something. But for this example, we're just going to use is moving. And then what this node is going to do is when we are moving, we're going to do whatever's going into the true pose. So the rest of our anim graph. And when it is false, when we're not moving, it will be A posing. So if we have a look here, our character is not moving, so therefore they're A posing. Uh, when we start moving, however, the rest of the anim graph kicks in. And then we stop moving, we go back to the A pose. Now you can see that blend time looks very janky. But if we wanted to change the blending times and also the blend type, so up here you can change it from linear to cubic or hermite cubic. We'll keep it linear for now. You can also put in a custom blend curve that will change the alpha over time sort of thing. For this example, let's just put them both at one second. And if we hit play now, you'll see that it takes a second for the character to go from the A pose back to the walking and then back to the, the A pose. So blend times are super, super important to get all your animations kind of flowing together really nicely. Another way you can use the blend poses by bool function I use it here to stop my IK being active without actually stopping the calculations. So what we're doing over here is we're caching the locomotion pre-IK. So if you don't know how to do that, you drag off of here, you go cache pose, new save cache pose, you know, this one, you can rename it up here. Then you can recall it wherever by right clicking and going, you know, the name of it so saved pose blah 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 now the reason that we do this is because you can then use this in multiple places so the way i utilize this is we cache the locomotion pre-ik then we use that pose to do all of our ik calculations and blah 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 and then if we want to turn it off we can simply do this blend poses by bool and if it's set to true or, you know, depending on how you've got it set up. Um, if this bool is set to true, it will just use the regular animation without IK. And if it's set to false, it will use the IK solved version of the animations. So the reason I do this with my IK is so that when the character jumps or starts falling or ragdolling or climbing over stuff, it can quickly blend out, but then it can slowly blend back in. And I just find this a lot more consistent than actually turning off the IK or changing the IK's parameters, you know, in real time. Another thing we can use this blend poses by bool node for is in conjunction with a layered blend per bone. So what I've got set up here is I've got my combat turn in place state and my combat strafing state, which then both get put into a layered blend per bone, which is essentially saying the bottom and top half of the character are different. So if I hit play and I hit shift, which is my combat mode thing, um, and then we start moving forward, whatever, you know, this all looks good. But then if I'm in place and I start turning, 
it will play my turning in place system. And then if we go from turning in place to walking again, it will blend into the combat strafing animations. And again, if we go back to turning in place, it will play my turning in place system. And that's a way that we might want to use blend poses by Bool. So another really closely related thing to the blend poses by Bool is blend poses by Enum. Now you might search this up and get confused. Uh, blend poses by Enum. Uh, you'll see there is a ton of these that are there by default. The reason these are there is because an enumeration is actually an object that you create. So if we right click, we go to blueprints, we go to enumeration. We can call this tutorial enum. We're gonna click on this and over here, right at the top right, we're gonna click new, we're gonna click new again and new again. This is called ya ya. This is called Schmeebel. This one's called Doodly Doo. If we look now and we go blend by tutorial enum, then you can see here it's only got a default pose by default, but you need to right click this and you can see add pin for element. We've got ya ya, Schmeebel, Doodly Doo. And there you go. We've got all these in here. We can put poses into each of them. And then into the enum value, we basically just need a variable that says, hey, we're using this one. Very similar to blend poses by integer. So that was a quick little rundown of blend poses by bool and blend poses by enum. Hope that you found it useful, entertaining, educational. If you want to support these tutorials, the best thing you can do is to like and subscribe to this video. But if you want to go one step further, we do have a Patreon of which we do have a $1 tier. So you can support us for $1 a month. And if you would like to learn alongside me, I do stream most days on Twitch and our links can be found in the description below. So with that, say goodbye. Goodbye.